In this video, I wanna cover my plan to get wealthy in 2024. My name's George, I run an agency doing 50K a month right now. And in this video, I kind of wanna show you my plan to get to 100K a month and beyond. And hopefully you can learn a few things and potentially apply them to your business. So let's get straight into it. Now, I think the first thing I wanna cover is leverage, okay? So leverage is a concept that a lot of people talk about on YouTube especially, you know, in the business world, right? Alex Becker, you're Alex Hormozis. And there's a good reason for that. It's incredibly, incredibly important. Now, the thing that you've got to understand is that with an agency business model, you have quite low leverage, right? The reason for that is because it's done for you. So what this means is that every time you sign a client, your business actually gets worse. The reason is, is because you have to sacrifice your own time or your team's time or whoever is delivering the service in order to fulfill for that client, which means more clients, less time, less output, right? So there is a capacity on the agency business model. Now, this is by no means telling you to not run an agency. In fact, you should absolutely run an agency. If you were at zero right now in business, an agency is one of the best things you can start because it teaches you every single skill that you need to succeed in future business models which have higher amounts of leverage, which we'll cover in a second. So the reason why is because you can deploy your own time, which means that there's no capital investment, it's very, very low risk. And so yeah, you can essentially just leverage your own time delivering done for you services to get from anywhere from you know 10K a month to 50K a month up to 100K a month. Well, obviously you probably need a team by then, but that is the core concept. Now, I'm gonna try and illustrate leverage here for a second, so bear with me. Essentially, the concept of leverage to me is essentially the input to output that you're getting for any given endeavor, right? So let's say this arrow here is input. And this kind of area here is the kind of, you know, activity, right? Or the medium or the endeavor that you're deploying the input through. So this could be you know, ranging from something as micro as, you know, your acquisition channel, like cold email or, you know, inbound. And then what comes out of that is the output, okay? Now, for an agency, you're kind of getting pretty similar input for output. You know, you put one hour in of your time, you're going to get a pretty equivalent output out, which means that you can't infinitely scale it. However, for other business models that don't require your own time, such as an information product, an e-commerce brand, or a software, those are three main ones that have access to scale, then you're essentially not bound by the input of your time. The only input you're kind of bound by is a higher capital requirement, which is why it's not so good for beginners. Essentially, the way I see it is zero to six figures, you know, leverage doesn't even really matter that much because you kind of haven't even earned the right to pursue higher leverage opportunities. You kind of need to get capital first and so the only input you can afford to give is your time because you don't have capital. It's like time and capital. Those are the inputs that you have available to you. And so you're kind of bound to that lower leverage opportunity of an agency. So zero to six agency. So my plan in 2024 to get wealthy is essentially to surpass the agency business model. And that's a lie. What I would say here, I would say actually zero to six is freelancer, right? This is where you're leveraging purely your own time. You don't have a team at this point, you don't have anything, it's just you. Zero to six is freelancer. Now this is the lowest leverage opportunity because it is your time. You are completely bound by your own calorific energy, your own time, right? Your own time input. You literally cannot exceed a certain amount of clients and therefore you cannot exceed a certain amount of you know, monthly revenue, right? So. I really don't see freelancers going very far beyond six or low multi six figures, right? Zero to seven figures, in my opinion, is where the agency model comes in. Now, if you don't have a team, you're not an agency, you're a freelancer. So as soon as you take the service that you're delivering as a freelancer and you add a team to it, right, then you become an agency, okay? So zero to seven is agency. So now you have more leverage because you're using other people's time, okay? You're not purely constrained by your own time. You now can leverage other people's time, which means that you have greater output for the collective input that your company is, is kind of putting in, okay? So that's where I'm at right now. And, uh, you know, it takes years to 
pass through these models of leverage, right? I've been in business for a year and a half and, you know, I, I kind of got to the agency stage pretty much halfway through that. So let's say, I don't know, I think it was probably about, yeah, like nine months in. And then, you know, now I'm close to exiting the agency stage. Uh, we're doing 50K a month. So yeah, still got a way to go, but, you know, we're nearly at the seven figure mark, right? But agencies don't scale very well past seven figures because it's still reliant on people's time. Like that's the thing here. You can hire as many people as you want, but it's still time reliant, which isn't infinitely scalable, okay? So if you want to easily surpass eight figures, and don't get me wrong, there are agencies that are eight, eight figures. King Kong Marketing is a great example. Sabri Subi's agency. Client Boost is another really cool example. So they can get to eight figures. It's just not a very fun business model to get to eight figures. Like in my opinion, agencies should stay at seven figures. That's when they're at their healthiest and they should just really sit there and print cash and actually fund the bigger plays that are gonna get you to eight and nine figures, okay? So zero to eight, or oh, sorry, not zero to eight, sorry. This should be six to seven and there should be seven to eight. This is where you need to encounter or you need to pursue a model of leverage that doesn't require time. Essentially, you build a product and once it's built, it's built and it can just be sold infinitely. It doesn't require anyone else's time necessarily to sell it. Obviously, you've got to like, you know, maintain it, improve it, R&D, research and development, all that kind of stuff. But for every sale you make, there is not necessarily an increase in time that is required to sort of deliver and kind of provide value, right? So to me, this is e-com, right? So you have a physical product that you're selling to people, direct to consumer. So B to C. Info, where you're selling information. So you're selling a course, you're selling coaching, training, something like that. Okay, again, you build a course, it's built, it's there, it's done. And you can sell it infinitely without needing to invest your own time, which means there's a much greater amount of leverage that you can acquire. And then the other one is software, okay? There's obviously many more. There's, you know, you can make a construction business. There's, you know, all this kind of stuff, but we're talking really about online businesses on this channel, okay? So these really are the three main ones to get to, from seven to eight figures, okay? Now, the only reason I feel comfortable talking about this is I'm not obviously at eight figures myself is because I have many friends who have done this in each, of the three disciplines that I've got here. So that is essentially what I'm now looking at, okay? Now for me, personally, I'm not gonna discuss my plans too in depth, but for me, I know that I need to essentially get more leverage for the time that I'm, or the energy that I'm putting in rather. And so I need something that can scale without my time. And so it's essentially gonna be one of these things. Um, that I'm definitely gonna start in 2024. Once we hit, you know, or once we get close to hitting seven figures, one of these things is gonna be next on the list, okay? So what can you actually learn from this? Like, why is this video so valuable? Well, I think you need to start thinking about leveraging your own business. Now, I think the mistake that a lot of entrepreneurs make, and I've criticized uh, an entrepreneur called Serge Guattari in the past for making this mistake, is that you try and shortcut the leverage equation and you try and scale into different business models that you're not really prepared to do. So I think that every entrepreneur should kind of pass through this stage. Now, of course, there's gonna be people who go from you know, zero to eight figures with e-com straight away or with you know, software straight away because they have, you know, they're very, very lucky. But for most people, the easiest thing to do is just trade your time for money, okay, at the start because you don't have a high amount of skills and you don't have a high amount of capital. So really all you just have is your time and your work ethic. So that's why many people start the freelancer with low leverage. And it is okay to start with low leverage. You shouldn't try and get to the highest leverage opportunity straight away. You kind of need to earn leverage because it's such a powerful thing, right? It's kind of like great power comes great responsibility. So it's actually probably a good thing that you can't shortcut your way to, you know, an incredibly high leverage but difficult business model to fulfill on. Something like software as a service, for example. So yeah, I mean, this is kind of what I think about quite a lot is just this equation here. And I think you should definitely start thinking about it as well because it can help to understand where you're going, right? If you're a freelancer right now in the trenches, like I was for so long, it's very, very beneficial to understand that you're not gonna be stuck at that constrained, you know, level of leverage forever. That's just a phase, okay? So that's kind of where I stand on this. And so I suppose my story and kind of how this all ties into what I've done is, you know, I started my agency in 2022. I was in a job that I absolutely hated. And I mean, that is really the lowest leverage opportunity, really, is a nine to five, is, is a job. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with a nine to five, but chances are, if you're watching this channel, you're probably 
not too fond of the idea. So yeah, it's the lowest leverage opportunity because of course you are not only trading your time for money, but you're literally trading your hours, right? Being a freelancer, sure you're trading your time, but really you're gonna be getting paid on based on results in most cases. You shouldn't be working on it for an hourly rate as a freelancer, that is a massive mistake because that is going to constrain you to very low leverage. You can only make as much money as you have hours in a month, for example, or as high a rate as the person's gonna pay you, which really isn't gonna be that high. So you should always work based on performance, right? So you should charge you know, based on performance. You don't necessarily need to take a percentage of the performance that you generate, but just charge a retainer for the results that you generate, okay? Not for your time. You must frame it like that. And so, yeah, once I escaped the kind of nine to five opportunity that I was in, or I wouldn't even call it an opportunity, more of a prison, I became a freelancer, right? Um, I started my agency, ClickSpring. We do Google and YouTube ads for e-commerce brands. And I started getting paid instead of for my hours, I started getting paid for results that I was generating other companies. Now, of course, it was only me at this stage, so I only had so much time to deliver those results in, but that was a huge leap. And that took me from making, you know, probably 1.5K in a month from my job to making 5K a month and eventually 10K a month with this freelancing stage that I was at because I had more leverage to make that money. Yeah, that was huge for me. That changed my entire life. You know, getting from zero to six, is incredibly difficult because you have to change your entire identity. I tweeted about this the other day. It's it, the beautiful thing about you know being an entrepreneur isn't necessarily building your business. It's the change in identity that you go through because your business is a reflection of you. It's a mirror, especially at the start when it is just you as a freelancer because it's just you. There's no other people in the business affecting it. It's just you. Every input that you execute is an output. So the business is you, right? which means it reflects all of your weaknesses. And basically your personal kind of growth is parallel with the growth of the business. So building a business isn't just building a business, it's actually building yourself, which is why zero to six is so hard because you have to change your entire identity. You kind of start as a civilian and then you change into a business owner who understands concepts such as leverage, which is really how people get rich, right? The richest people are just, they just have access to the highest amount of leverage. You know, Elon Musk has an insane amount of leverage because he has an insane amount of capital, obviously. He has, you know, technology, he has time, he has connections, right? There's different types of leverage, of course. It's not just time and money. I think I've got some space over here. It's time, right? It's money. But, you know, software can also be a form of leverage, right? If you build a piece of software, you build AI, for example, that is technically a form of leverage because you can use that to you know, reduce your, the, the inputs of time and money and you can kind of get output from that. There's other forms of leverage, but regardless, zero to six is the hardest part. It was terribly hard for me. I mean, Jesus, I did every single thing wrong. I sucked at running an agency, at being a freelancer, being an entrepreneur. I, I really sucked and it's okay to suck. Like one of the most reassuring things that I kind of came across when in my first year of business is a video about someone who is definitely towards the, the latter end of this uh, leverage equation, who was literally like, you know, your first year of business, you're gonna suck. You know, you're gonna be eating shit every single day. And you know, it's, that's the normal, that, that's normal, right? It's not like everyone in their first year gets to 10K a month in three days and, you know, makes all this money as I suppose the SMA gurus would have you believe on YouTube. It's not like that. It's very difficult because you have low leverage and you have low skills and you have low mindset. You have a low quality set of beliefs that affect your business because you are your business. So yeah, um, I mean, just to illustrate that, I guess, you know, you are, how should we illustrate a business? Let's do like a briefcase, right? It's supposed to be a briefcase. It looks like a handbag. You are your business. So it's very difficult, okay? But once you hire people, and you can deploy their time, right? And leverage more of this, you become an agency, right? You're in this six to seven figure opportunity, which is where I am. And you can get more done. You can get more units of output by leveraging other people's time, which means that you can make more money. Very simple. The more employees you have, the more output you can generate, the more money you make. Of course, you have to be able to afford to pay them and have work for them to do. So you can't just go and hire 10 employees if you've only got one client, but if all goes well, the more employees you have, the more output you generate, right? That's why companies grow in size of employees. It's because the demand for the work grows, um, the demand for the input of time grows, and they meet that with supply of workers, which generates cash, right? So it's definitely interesting. It's the stage that I'm at right now, and I'm trying to 
it's a very simple business model, really, is running an agency. Is this, this six to seven figure thing here, it kind of looks scary, right? But it's really not, it's very simple. You sign clients, you hire people. You sign clients, you hire people. You sign clients, you hire people. You keep increasing the amount of time you can deploy into the business and you scale, right? It's a very simple business model, really. I can literally illustrate the business model for you in five seconds. You have marketing, right? So this is inbound, this is outbound. You're sending emails to people or you are attracting people to you, okay? You know, basically you have something to sell and now you are telling people that you have this thing to sell, okay? And then marketing turns into sales. And then sales turns into delivery. And then delivery turns into operations, right? Because you now have clients to manage, you now have ideally uh, employees to manage as well, okay? And then just the cycle continues really. It's, there's just four main areas, marketing, sales, service delivery, and operations. It's very simple. And uh, if you do all of those things right, then you'll get to seven figures. It's just a matter of time. The thing about time is money. So that's pretty much the six to seven leverage range. I mean, then the next step is obviously to talk about seven to eight figures, right? Yeah, seven to eight figures is something I can't really talk about yet. I haven't reached that stage, but this is the kind of point of the video. It's talking about what I want to do in, in 2024 and hopefully inspiring you to do the same. Um, if you guys are at, you know, maybe the six to seven range, some of you watching this, if you're making 20, 30, 50K a month, something like that, or even more than me, of course, then yeah, you need to think about how you're going to increase your leverage because your agency won't scale forever. You need to now build something that is going to scale without your time. You could build a software, you could build a product, or you could build a course or something like that. And that's gonna allow you to sell that thing again and again and again and again and again, with, uh, you know, little to no repercussions when it comes to time. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, I just kind of wanted to cover this model of leverage here, input and activity. And then of course you've got your output. And yeah, I think you guys should just figure out how to minimize your input and maximize your output. Because really, why do we start online businesses? Most people start online businesses to <laughs> do the least amount of work for the biggest amount of output. Now, of course, I mean, you know, when you get into online business, you realize that's not even the fun bit. The fun bit is actually increasing the amount of input, maxing it out, and then really maxing out the output so that you build something bigger than yourself and something really valuable. But it depends what you want, right? If you want to sit on a beach, or maybe you want to spend time with your family, uh, or maybe you want to kind of step back from working 10 hours a day, then you need to build something that has low amount of input and a high amount of output. And that is going to be one of these things here, okay? Um, so you kind of need to in my opinion, get through these stages in your early 20s. Now, there's no right way to do it, but this is my paradigm. Get through these stages in your early 20s, build something that can scale without your time, sell that thing again and again and again, and then you can slowly, as you get older, decrease your input and uh, maximize your output so you don't have to work every day. Uh, you just make money still, you cash flow, right? Now, of course, you can obviously then sell this one of these things for a huge return and kind of get out of the game if you want. Anyway, I'm just kind of stipulating at this point, but that's my theory. So. Yeah, I'll end it at that. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a different style. I kind of enjoy making this kind of raw kind of content here because, you know, YouTube is full of really clickbaity, short form stuff. I did that for a while. I don't really want to make it anymore. So yeah, I'm just going to try and illustrate my thoughts when it comes to business on a whiteboard and see how that goes. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.